Hello everyone, I've been playing Wuthering Waves this past week and decided to give it my quick first impression or a mini review of some sort since I pretty much finished the game at this point. In case there's still someone out there who hasn't tried it, to just say it right away, it's an actual straight up Genshin Impact clone or second generation Breath of the Wild clone, that's it and it's not a bad thing at all. If you like Genshin and you just want more of it, then here you go, Wuthering Waves will deliver just that. Great gameplay, good enough visuals and it has the story? Well, I guess it's clear where my priorities are with this game. Honestly, when I first heard about it a few months back, I wrote it off, but after having seen more recent trailers closer to its release, I got intrigued and decided to pick it up. What I'm trying to get at is, I went into it with basically no expectations and obviously that's the best thing that can happen. That being said, these past few months the Wuthering Waves was polished a lot, so even if I already had my preconceived notions, I'm pretty sure I would have still thought it's a great game. There are still some minor issues I will nitpick in this video and I almost want to recommend going into the game blind so you might actually want to consider watching this later. Don't worry about story spoilers though, there won't be any. First of all, is this game worth playing if you don't like Genshin Impact? Some people seem to do just that and enjoy their time so by all means give it a try, but it is a little confusing to me, like I said earlier, most of the systems will feel very familiar. Which in turn means if you like Genshin, there's a good chance that you will like this game too. Withering Waves also coincidentally overlaps in the best way possible with Genshin releases. About halfway through a Genshin patch, there will be a new release in Withering Waves and vice versa. So they seem to complement each other very well, covering for their downtime. I don't think there's a reason to be concerned about simultaneous releases in both games and being flooded with new content. I would almost call it intentional by Withering Waves. As for the story, they exchanged the high fantasy setting for I believe you would call this a cyberpunk setting. It's futuristic but not full on sci-fi with a, some sort of crisis going on. The storytelling is just usual dialogue boxes at the bottom without anything major going on on screen, which in my opinion is a shame. It's understandable though, these gacha games all seem to prioritize a high release schedule and to meet that they have to resort to 20 year old forms of story exposition. Quantity over quality I guess. This might sound a little hyperbolic, if you like retro games this might not be an issue for you, it's just not my preference. If I'm looking for an immersive story experience, I play regular single player releases like The Last of Us for example, or right before this I actually played through the new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and that game reeks of endless money being blown into it, I guess the stark contrast also didn't really help me enjoy Wuthering Wave story more. Most of the time listening to the dialogue, I was spacing out to be honest. I feel like having gameplay at the same time would improve the experience a lot to make it more feel like playing a game and not listening to an audiobook. To be fair, the far and few cutscenes in between are great though. It's basically the same as in Genshin, the overall story premise is interesting, but the presentation is lacking to say the least. Again, I understand this comes down to preference. If you really like retro RPGs, even going back to the original Final Fantasy VII, then Wuthering Waves will probably just do fine for you. For me, that's not a deal breaker though. Story is not the reason I play these service type games, it's more that I like progressing my account. I basically treat Gacha like these cookie cutter ADHD games that you log into on a daily basis, as weird as it sounds, but it kind of reminds me of a single player MMO. For this, there needs to be good gameplay and gameplay loops. Again, I did this video under the assumption that people are familiar with Genshin, so I won't focus too much on the similarities all the systems tied to building characters and overall progression will be instantly recognizable. There's a little bit of a special twist to artifacts or echoes as they are called in Wuthering Waves. It's more straightforward in this game since enemies basically just drop them like in any regular RPG and only the process of upgrading is actually time gated by the usual gacha BS energy system or whatever free materials they provide in between. As a result, I would expect getting really good pieces will happen a lot faster in this game since you can basically infinitely farm for the correct main stats at least. 
The most noticeable innovation is in the combat system though. These echoes I just talked about can also be equipped to a slot which grants your characters another active skill. Yes, this game introduced a third button to press. You still have your elemental and bear skill, but also your echo skill. You still end up at both the same button total though as in Genshin, since your team only consists of three members. When it comes to synergy between them, they also ditched the idea of doing combos like elemental reactions and came up with something new called intro and outro skills. There's a little gotch at the bottom of your screen called Concerto Energy, which fills up by doing certain attacks. When it's full, switching to another character will trigger basically a synergy attack between both of them. Most of the utility when it comes to damage buffs is tied to the system, so it's quite important. There are still the usual categories of roughly DPS, sub-DPS and utility characters, but to have good damage buff uptime, you have a little bit of a different dynamic when it comes to field time of all your characters since you want to perform certain actions that fill their concerto energy. By the way, you will see that sound waves are a major theme in this game, it's not just concerto energy and echoes. Anyway, to me this is a very interesting new take on the team synergy and especially how it's reflected in gameplay. Not to say that this is necessarily better than elemental reactions, theoretically you could even have both, but maybe the devs thought that it would be a little bit too much, which is fair enough. I also think the user interface is a little bit better when it comes to character special mechanics. There are just displays over your health bar and you don't have to solely rely on visual cues like in Genshin. For example, if you want to know how many mirrors your Alhatham currently has, you can't just look at, the, at his health bar and get this information. I believe that's true for most cases. There are some exceptions like Alekino though, but in Wuthering Waves you have this display for every character. When it comes to tracking buffs and debuffs, they could do some major improvements though. For the most part, this game is very responsive and similar to Genshin, you can also dodge attacks by using stamina. But while this is very much only a suggestion, that more often than not gets rejected in Genshin because there is no punishment for getting hit. You either absorb or heal any damage taken instantly. In Wuthering Waves, at least right now, you seem to die way faster in endgame content, so you are forced to dodge and there is also parrying. Don't worry though, this is no Dark Souls, the timing is very generous, but it still feels very rewarding. Perfect dodge or parry into a counter does nice damage, gives you energy, and if fighting a boss, a parry will often create like some sort of opening to attack some more. No matter how you spin it, this is a straight up improvement. They actually have the perfect solution for the main problem with Genshin combat in my opinion. But I still have some minor gripes with it. First of all, I don't like the camera, but to draw another parallel to the Soul series, you can make it work. There's no free camera option, but you can turn off all the automatic stuff and you get something similar enough. Also, the default zoom is aggressively close, especially for a system that has such a huge emphasis on dodging or parrying. In other words, you need to see what's going on, but again, there are options to zoom out to a comfortable degree. The other thing is, it feels like this game is designed to be played with the lock on. I would like to have the option to aim my skills in the direction my character is facing when not using lock on, but there seems to be some auto targeting going on even in that case. I feel like there should be an adequate support for a free camera, no lock on playstyle for people who prefer that. If they could provide that, I would call combat and withering waves perfect. In general though, it's not a big deal since more often than not auto targeting is probably even kind of helpful, especially when fighting some very agile bosses because the lock on is struggling sometimes there. It's more so annoying when fighting larger groups or it can be in some instances and in general those don't pose much of a challenge which makes it very much acceptable in my opinion. The endgame is kind of similar to Genshin or even more so Honkai Star Rail. You have something similar to Abyss or MOC which you can do I believe on a two week reset called Tower of Adversity. There's also a roguelike mode similar to Simulated Universe called Depth of Elusive Realm which I think resets every new update so every 40 days, don't quote me on that though. But the biggest surprise to me were actual boss challenges that can be found on the regular world map. They seem to be a one-time thing, but I would assume new ones will be added whenever a new region releases. They are actually very challenging and have different difficulty tiers that also add new moves to the bosses. This is honestly great. In general, the wild map is also quite big and filled with all sorts of stuff, the usual like weekly bosses, regular bosses, domains, chests, puzzles, etc. Again, it's 
very familiar. Overall, I'm very happy with the endgame in Wuthering Waves, especially considering that this is the 1.0 version. Of course, sooner than later, you will still be done and only do your quote-unquote chores. This game is no exception to that inevitable reality. I feel like, aside from the bosses, I'm basically already there, but I think that's perfectly fine. A lot of people like to be tied down to a single game, but personally I never understood that anyway. And that's all I had to say for now. In general, if you like Genshin, there's a good chance you will like Wuthering Waves if you don't mind the different setting. Like I said in the beginning, if you've only seen old trailers, the game was polished quite a lot in the meantime. Yes, some of the textures still look a little bit funny, and I heard some people have performance issues. There's still work to be done, but so far the publisher and dev studio seem to be working hard on fixing issues and dishing out compensations. You can literally pity 3 or 4 5 stars in the first two weeks. That alone is exceptional if you're coming from Genshin. Anyway, time to wrap it up. I might do more videos on this game in the future, but there's also a lot of new Genshin content releasing, so it might take a while. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for more. Until then, have fun and bye bye.